There are approximately 15 million hunters in the U.S. alone. Many of these would consider their style to be off-grid. In today's society, with constant sprawling of urban growth, boundaries have changed. Off-grid has changed. Welcome to Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the world, and the home of Lake Tahoe. Today we visit hometown hero, Remy Warren. This guy is a master of a lot of different sports and hobbies, and is the owner of his own guide service. He is our next target to crash his party and get an inside look of his off-grid taste. From thousands of requests, we handpick individual hunters to invade their personal space and to find out how they get off-grid. Are these guys truly badasses? In order to do this right, we pulled in someone who really knows. Meet host, Tim Burnett. This guy eats beer for breakfast. Tim has made a career out of hunting alone. This guy sleeps more nights on the ground than most people do on their own bed. Known for hunting and fishing alone, many consider Tim to be OG solo hunter. And I'm Mark Bellister, a comic, TV personality, and a jiu-jitsu fighter from New York. I've been producing TV for over six years. Many like to say that I'm a wild jokester. And I guess you could say I like the lighter side of things. Together, we hit the road to see what defines an off-grid hunter. But there's a catch. It's not going to be easy. We're going to jump into their shoes for the day and get an inside look of their different backwoods city lives. We are here to see if they really are an off-grid hunter. Today we're not going very far from home. One of the most badass guys in the modern hunting industry lives just a few miles away from me. So it only made sense for me to bring him in and show off his off-grid hunting lifestyle. When he says he bases his worldwide hunting adventures from here, he means it. This guy hunts 300 days a year as a professional guide and TV personality. Tim? Remy. What's up, man? How's it going? Welcome to the man cave, my friend. Awesome. I'm Remy Warren, and welcome to my bachelor pad where I base all my off-grid hunting adventures from. California bighorn that I took in Nevada and anytime I'm home I like to sit on the couch on that side and pretty much have the, I might have a TV on but I'm mostly staring at that ramp. This is my brother's first uh, archery mule deer we were hunting um, and we were backcountry hunting and I was blood trailing my deer and I look over and I glass across the canyon and see this deer I'm not sure if it's my buck or not so I asked my brother, I said, hey, look through the scope and see if that's my deer. And he said, did your deer have a three inch drop tine on it? And I said, no. So he went over and shot that buck and that was his first uh, backcountry mule deer with a bed. The longer I've known Remy, the more he comes to impress me. Remy Warren lives the lifestyle that most guys in the world would love to have, but very few have the balls to actually do it. This guy is a beast, an apex predator, an off-grid hunter. I, I sometimes trophy hunt if I'm gonna shoot a, a, a male animal. That was just meat hunting anyways, so it was the uh, first spike I ever shot just a year ago, actually. But, uh, that's why I have these little spike points. So a lot of people always ask me why I chose to live in Reno, Nevada, of all places. I get to travel all over the world and do a lot of cool things, and I choose to live in Reno because it's essentially a training ground for me for anything I could run into in the world. Um, it's There's so many different kinds of adventures you can have just in this area. You can, Within an hour's drive, you can be up in the Alpine, or you can be in sand dunes that are 100 feet tall. I can do like desert type running, river rafting, fishing. There's just so many different things for me to do since I was a kid. 
I can train for any situation that I find anywhere else in the world just by living right here. So this is why I choose to live in Reno because for me, when I go off grid, I know what I'm gonna get into just by doing things and little adventures around my hometown. Professional hunting and guiding is this guy's life. We rarely get a chance to really sit down and learn from a guy like this, so I'm super pumped to take a minute and ask him some deeper questions. So Remy, I think a lot of people would really like to know what's it like in a normal day in the life of Remy Boy? Yeah, I mean my normal day is I get up, I do some kind of workout, mostly running. Um, then if I've got a little bit of time, I'll do a little paddle boarding or fly fishing or hiking or rock climbing or some other kind of sport. Um, and then, yeah, just doing, you know, maybe going to the solo office and doing some voiceover stuff or looking over videos, organizing a lot of videos and pictures. Um, I'll sit in front of my computer and write articles and, uh, and then also just organize my gear for the season because I'm traveling so much so I kind of have to have things ready in advance so I've got a system down and I just add or remove gear and then I'm ready to go. I, I write for Western Hunter and Elk Hunter magazine and they're pretty much focused on Western big game hunting. I've got a column in there that's pretty much a tips and tricks type column. There's all kinds of, of different topics I cover and I pretty much just give away all my hunting secrets. A lot of people will have hunting secrets that they take with them to the grave, but uh, for me, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be out there enough that uh, I get to learn a lot of things that other people might not think of when they just go out for a couple weeks a year. So it's, I think it's part of my duty to just share those things with other people. And so my writing really helps me kind of give the how-tos of things that I do daily when I'm in the and that's a, one of the cool things is I get like emails of somebody that read an article and then went out and tried it and you know here's a success photo and it's like that that's cool to me. Or even with the TV stuff, you know, I think um, a lot of people get inspired to try things that that we do and it's cool to hear about that, you know, because that's what we're doing. You know, I like to share the hunt. I mean, I share the hunt when I'm guiding. I share the hunt when I'm filming and I share the hunt when I'm writing. So that's that's my big thing is sharing what I do with other people. When I first met Remy, I was impressed by his ability to hunt, but also his knack for storytelling and documenting his adventures with photos and film. I'm so high octane, I jump across state lines. I don't just drive across them, I jump across them. Be excited to uh, get camp set up and get going. Yeah. I film my every year. You never know when you're gonna have to show somebody what happened in real life. Got the tags in hand. Yes! Starting today, I'm gonna be solo hunting the red zone. It's just me, the coos deer, the illegal immigrants, and the drug lords. Stupid. I got everything I need. I got my tent, my sleeping bag. Uh, I've got my machete and my pistol for self-defense. Because I'm hunting by myself, I also have a spot. Um, the spot allows people back home to track exactly where I'm at. If anything happens, I can hit emergency button. I feel like I'm prepared, and I think it's gonna be a good hunt. Go get some firewood. I'm stoked on it. Say a little prayer for safety because this is not the safest choice that I can make is to stay down here by myself. It's just one of those things. You, you take a risk everywhere. If I'm hunting in Montana, I'm taking a risk with grizzly bears. If I'm hunting on the border, I'm taking a risk with drug cartels and uh, illegal immigrants. I'm prepared, I know what I'm up against, and I'm gonna try to do everything in my power to be safe and have a successful hunt.
I just shot this javelina. I, uh, I snuck in to where I thought they were, and one kind of kicked out. I thought they, they, I thought I blew it. So I blow on my predator call, and a javelina comes, like, it was, there was one bedded maybe 10, 12 feet away, comes about five yards. I can't shoot through the brush. Um, and then another one comes straight at me, and they're just running in. Uh, I, I had the camera, like, I was trying to set the camera, but it happened so fast, I hit that call, and they came running. Not even a second to spare. Um, it was insane. I, I don't even think I had this camera on, the main camera on. I think I got it on my GoPro. Oh, thank God for helmet cams. Whew. These are in the mountains, though. I put in a lot of miles just to harvest something, so I hope I got it on the GoPro, because if not, what am I doing out here? I guess I'm calling in and shooting javelinas. <laughs> After I shot, I'm pretty sure I saw him go down. I saw this cactus fly. I don't think he went very far. I'm pretty sure I... <laughs> I just shot from right over there. Havelina down, baby. Yes! I am stoked. Oh, this is my first Havelina. Whoa. Dude. That is an awesome animal. Oh, dude. They got some chompers. Bam. Don't turn your TV away. There's more insane hunting action. That's my catchphrase. Insane. I hate talking in the camera. This segment of Off Grid Hunter is brought to you by G5, designed to hunt. Prime, accuracy is everything. MOA Rifles, the evolution of long range hunting. Random Gear, the makers of Solo Hunter rifle covers. Outdoor Edge, quality knives and tools for all of your outdoor adventures. If you, you took the approach of putting yourself and taking opportunities that were there, putting yourself in a position then more opportunities came, and now you've been able to experience traveling the world, hunting all over the world, uh, meeting guys like Steven, you're able to go on the Joe Rogan, you know, podcast and, and the Rogan experience. And, and there's a lot of things that you've been able to do that have boosted your career that other people, if they just look for those opportunities and, and are good at what they're trying to do, you know, they have to be good at what they're trying to do. Otherwise, yeah. it's, it doesn't matter. If you're not good at it, people aren't going to recognize it. So if you're good at it and you're passionate about it and you keep pushing forward, opportunities are going to present themselves in a small little way, way. It's just, it's up to you to be able to pounce on those opportunities. Yeah, exactly. You got to put yourself in a position to be able to get those opportunities. And that means going out and doing it. You can't just sit at home and hope somebody one day is going to give you a job guiding because yeah. the only way to do it is to completely have no other option but to go out there. I mean, be prepared to live in a tent for four or five months well, until you figure it out. You've got to prepare yourself for some vulnerability because inevitably there's guys out there watching it like, I'm twice the hunter of those two, you know, guys sitting there on that couch. And I've, I've heard it, you know I mean? I'm, I'm a way better hunter than you are. I've, got, I've killed way more animals. Well, yeah, that's fine, you know, but I'm working hard, you know, and I'm, yeah. I'm growing and doing all this. So you're, there's always going to be critics out there that are going to, and there's always going to be guys that are better too. That's the thing. Even, oh, even sure. better than you. Oh yeah. As, as good as Remy Warren is, somewhere out there. And if you're out there, I want to hear about it because I want you on the show. <laughs> there's somebody out there better than Remy Warren, you know, and somebody that's working harder than you. Yeah, definitely. But that's what helps get me to wake up, you know, every day. It's like, okay, somebody out there is, is better than me. Somebody's working harder than me. So today I'm going to try to catch up to them just that little bit. Yeah. Here's another hunt that Remy makes look easy. Hunting mule deer in November with a recurve when he could have been hunting with a rifle. All while trying to capture it on film alone. But uh, just sitting here glassing on this point and uh, see if I can't spot that same buck or another buck. The rut's starting to pick up. It's a week later. Even one more week will be ideal rut, but um, they should start pushing does around now. See me when I'm laying down. 
down because of the slope. I pretty much had a yard sale. I think I left my tripod somewhere. <laughs> oh man, it's been a cluster today. But, big buck down. Look at this guy. Tripod situation out. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a beast. Look at the forks. That is a great, great, great meal there. <laughs> I'm stoked. It's too hard to film yourself walking up to me. It's kind of cheesy when you set the camera up and walk up. Ooh, look at the big deer. <laughs> I'm gonna do it either way. Check him out. That is an awesome deer. It was great to talk to Remy today. He's very talented, I must say. He definitely has the dream job that most people would kill to have. <laughs>